this week's parashah of Yitro opens with what is one of the most enigmatic episodes in the Torah. Because not only are we not sure what Yitro heard that caused him to join Moshe Rabbeinu and the Jewish people, and not only are we not sure of how he even found Moshe in the wilderness, but we don't even know when this story occurred, before or after Matan Torah, and whether or not Yitro converted to Judaism. But Yitro came, Vayavo Yitro, and the Torah identifies him as both a Kohen Midian, the priest of Midian, and the father-in-law of Moshe, Choten Moshe, which is a bizarre way to refer to him after all. Why remind us that he had been a pagan priest? According to the 12th century Tosafist, Rabbeinu Ephraim Me Regensburg, the reason is because ultimately, after all that Chitro heard and all that he saw, this father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu returned to be a pagan priest in Midian which is so very hard to imagine. After all, we're talking about Yitro, the man who had given refuge to Moshe Rabbeinu, the man who chose to join the Jews after the miracles of Yitziat Mitzrayim, the man who helped Moshe Rabbeinu design a system of justice, and the man who, according to the Midrash, challenged Paro and fled just as his future son-in-law, Moshe, would have to flee himself. How could such a man, how could Yitro have it all and then give it all up? How could he tell his son-in-law, Loilech, I won't go with you. Instead, ki imel vel elech. I will return to my land, to my homeland, According to Rabbeinu Ephraim, I'll return back to my idols. There may be two reasons. Reasons which can also explain why Yitro came to join the Jewish people and why he left. And the first, I learned from a colleague, Rabbi Shalom Baum, who suggested that the reason Yitro came and ultimately left is because of the Jewish people and the nation and the community they created. For as Reb Zalman Sarotskin explained, during the years that Moshe had lived with Yitro, they had engaged in theological discussions, which most likely planted the seeds for Yitro's ultimate decision to join Moshe Rabbeinu and the Bnei Yisrael. But why didn't Yitro come sooner? Why did he wait until after he heard of the miracles of the Exodus? Because as much as he was intrigued by Moshe, he may have been turned off by Moshe's people. After all, it was Moshe who gave up everything to rejoin his brothers and sisters only to be attacked when he tried to help one Jew from another. And it was Moshe who was abandoned by the leadership and had to confront Paro with only his brother at his side. And it was Moshe who was continuously challenged and doubted, questioned and criticized by his people, even as he tried to help them. And so, as much as Yitro may have wanted to believe in the God of Israel, he didn't want to join the people of Israel. Remaining as our parasha reminds us as the priest of Midian, because up until the Exodus, the Jewish people were a contentious lot filled with complainers and powerless slaves of Egypt. But then, Vayishma Yitro. Yitro heard, 
He heard about the splitting of the sea and according to some, the revelation at Sinai, he heard how this nation was transforming itself. And so he joined them. He joined what he felt was the winning team because they were a team, ke'ish echad, b'lev echad. But tragically, that didn't last long because within weeks, the Jews returned to their former selves, challenging and complaining against Moshe and God. So Yitro packed up and left because his dreams of experiencing something greater, something more awe-inspiring were crushed, which could be the source of some fascinating conversations we could have about the kind of impressions we leave with others, what people see when we are careful about our behavior and what they see when we're not. But there is another possible explanation, one that suggests that the reason Nitro came was because of the thrill of the moment, the miracles, the majesty, and even the astounding victories of the Jewish people. In other words, it wasn't the Jewish people who draw him, drew him in, but the excitement and the exultation of the Exodus. But then the years of the desert descended upon him and the Jewish people. And while wondrous miracles remain, the exhilaration of the early years waned. And when that happened, Yitro's inspiration waned as well. And he left, he returned to a life he found more familiar and more comfortable because, explained the Otsrot HaTorah, a life of miracles, excitement and jubilation is not sustainable. And therefore it's a life that can lead to disappointment and even withdrawal. Consider, if you will, what happens to some of our children who spend a year in Israel learning. They find inspiration, meaning, and reborn devotion. But then, once they return to real life, once they leave their yeshivot and seminaries, their trips and their adventures and encounter day-to-day -day Judaism, their inspiration and enthusiasm dwindle because real life, normal life, is not always as exciting and never as much fun. And yet it's precisely that normal existence that Judaism is based upon. As Ben Zoma taught, the most crucial verse in the entire Torah is the Pasuk which describes the twice daily tamid sacrifices because a life of consistency, of routine and daily ritual is a life of the greatest kind of meaning. This may also explain why another famous biblical convert, Ruth, remained a Jew while Yitro abandoned our people because Yitro joined the people surrounded by miracles and excitement while Ruth joined the people at, time, at the end of the years of a famine. She joined real life and therefore she stayed while Yitro joined a nation propped up by Aparian fireworks. And when they stopped, he left, all of which reminded me of a visit I once made to someone in the hospital. And there in his room, among all of the balloons and the flowers and the cards, there was one card which caught my eye. It read, a lot of people want to ride with you in the limo, but what you want is someone who will take the bus with you when the limo breaks down. And Yitro, the priest of Midian, 
Choten Moshe, the father-in-law of Moshe Rabbeinu, heard at kol asher asah elokim l'Moshe Yisrael, all that God did for Moshe and the Jews, his nation. He heard, and he may have even learned, but it never made a lasting impact. He never got on the bus, whether it was because of us or because of him. And as a result, Yitro remained a conflicted and controversial person. He remained, as Rabbeinu Ephraim taught, a man of great accomplishment, but a man who ultimately failed. Shabbat Shalom.